Paces at dawn, Mr. Pete. Is it uh, paces, paces at dawn? Paces at dawn, is that what they used to say? It's, uh, what did they say? Did they say gun, uh, 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 well, something at dawn? Basically, we're dueling here. We're du- we? It's a duel. This is a it's duel. a duel. A duel or duel? A duel. A, a duel. duel. Um, Good old film from 1972 or three, The Duel. The Duel. Have you never seen it? Have you I've never, never seen watched it. that? It's, so. a, it's, it's a movie or film about a, uh, a guy driving a car through... The desert or something. With Maybe American, I have with the seen lorry, that. The guy yes, in the, in the truck. I've totally seen that film. That is such. It's a Stephen King thing, uh, film, I think. That is. I'm anyway, watching that. Anyway, this is not what we're talking about. I've owned this guitar since 2014, um, and there's a video of it of me uh, choosing it and buying it in Anderton's, um, and I'd wanted a Les Paul for a long time, uh, and we had some. 58s that turned up that that I'd picked the tops for so only from photographs and stuff and well, that looked nice that looked nice mm-hmm. came in and it was like one of those occasions where you go oh before we start to sell these I'm going to have the choice of like 10 58 Les Pauls went through them completely all my preconceptions about kinds of neck I might like weights of guitar I might like all went out the window and you just end up going you know what it's you just you find one don't you and you connect. Yeah. And I've had it ever since. And lots of people have played this, and, and even some famous people have said nice things about it. So I hope no, I've got I'm a good Ford one. really liked it. Yeah. And, and then, last year, we welcomed to the dark side <laughs> Mr. Peter Honora. So tell us about the story. Oh, well, and I'll embellish the bits that you yeah, forget. Yeah, probably, because I've probably forgotten most of it. <laughs> but I... So... I, I have been looking for this Paul for a while. I've got my gold top, which I've had for... I've had since 2007 or something. Right. 2008, maybe. It's um, older than that, isn't it? You've yeah, it's, two, it's 95. Yeah, I thought I so. Think. Yeah. So, and I think what happened was, then I was touring with Il Devo, and I really wanted this Paul. Il Devo, Il Devo, I will make uh, you <laughs> with my voice. <laughs> <laughs> Those guys, yeah. Uh, and uh, I, I, we were doing the... <laughs> That's the best Il Devo impression I've ever done. Yeah, and the first. And, and the probably first. the last. And pro- hopefully. <laughs> hopefully the last one. So 
We were, uh, this is no word of a lie. I was on a tour and it's all in ears, right? So on the stage, there's no amps or anything. And we were traveling around and I used actually a floor pod. Oh yes! Not even, do you remember? Not, not even a proper pod, not like even a cheap pod. Not, not even a, not even a 500 HD or anything. It was the first one that yeah. came out and I bought two of them. And I used it for sure. And it was great sound, and great in the ears and there was no sound stage. And I managed to get it to sound really good. And it, there's some videos out there which you shouldn't go and watch. Don't do that. Uh, when I'm playing, but I had, a, I had this, like a strat and stuff and it, it, I struggled a bit with the sustain. So I was like, I need to have a less pull for this. And, um, and, I f and that's when the first, didn't they, they do the first like historic or something then? Oh, or? true historic. True historic. Yes. First, very, very first they came out in 2007, eight, something like that. And I was looking around and I went into uh, now No Tom's, what was it called before? Oh, the, the guitar store on Denmark Street. I yeah. forget. And I picked up one of those guitars in there and it was like, like a, actually looked very much like this. Right. Very much like this. Picked up the guitar and played. I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. But it was a bit too much money. This was what before. I did the tour and then I was like, oh, I should have bought that guitar, called him up, I uh, sold. Damn it. Anyway, so I went online and I found a guy who bought two in America, but it was a tobacco burst or tobacco burst. Uh, I got it in and I, I thought that's all right, but the neck was just too chunky. Right. It's like a bit too fat and I didn't like it. So I went and took it to Chandler's and I sold it to them. I got, two, I got a 335 and the gold top. Right. Oh, so you swapped that swapped for two that guitars and for fifteen hundred quid, because there was the first guitar that ever came in. The, it was the ultimate, ultimate so flip. It was the ultimate flip for me. I, wow! I, I, I made money on that, like ultimate flip. Uh, and any, anyway, anyway. So, but since then, I've just thought about that Les Paul and missed that Les Paul because the gold top is different. Yes, it's a slim neck. It's it's the classic, isn't it? It's, it's the classic, classic one. Isn't yeah, it? so yeah. it's the sixties and. And anyway, so what do we do? We do the we go into the Gibson showroom, just filming, and um, in London, in London, amazing place. Uh, you wouldn't think that it's in there because it's like in right in the middle behind uh, what's it called um, Oxford Street, isn't it? Yeah, and it's the gl glorious place. So we we're doing we're doing. You might have seen the video of us faff about it. There didn't that go live? Yeah, and we're playing all of these guitars, and this one was sitting up. Mm. They up, must they must there. have had what. 40 or 50 custom shop Les Pauls in there. Yeah. It's a lot, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, there's a lot. And I played all of them and I was like, can I try that on up there? Because I liked it because it was relic, you know, because it's got the dings and the dongs in it, which means I like that kind of thing. And if, if they, to me, that always feels like they're played in a little bit and they're yeah. worn in a little bit. So I took that down and that was just it. I was like, oh my God, this is the best Les Paul I've ever played. I, for me, you know, maybe not for somebody else, I was like, is this a, this is just great. And I kept going on. And they were really, they were, they were sneaky. And you said, oh, can Pete take that one with him? And then they were like, yeah, we can do that. We only got the case and everything. And just went, just have that. And I was like, oh no. Uh, but, and I don't want to let it go. So. Well, this is where it got. So this is like, so that's what it get a bit. This, yeah. is, this is where then Pete and I sort of so I didn't know what it was to add a bit yeah this is it they, I had this, no idea what it was at the time this was just basically Pete's favourite Les Paul yeah. of all the ones and there and there are so many of them in yeah. there and uh, this one sounded great and I just couldn't stop playing so, so I thought I thought it was an interesting they then said the Gibson guys went oh by the way that's the most expensive Les Paul in here yeah so I didn't you, want to you say are, that yet. I, I wanted know. you to say was, that. Okay, so, so you're kind of like going, well, you know, on the one hand, that's bad because obviously you've fallen in love with the most expensive one. Yeah. But on the other hand, it's sort of reassuring that the most expensive one it's is the best one. Is the best one. Yeah, no, 100%. Um, but yeah, like you say, then you get completely stitched up because you're, you're literally yeah, going, I, like, can't, I can't afford this. A million percent can't afford it. And right. Gibson's just going, I'll oh, just borrow it for a couple of months, yeah. you know, and see how you get on and then give it back if, you yeah. know. Because before then it was like, oh, can we take it? Maybe I can leave it like, can maybe people try, try it out for a bit? And that's what they do. They lend, they loan stuff to artists. Yeah, to artists. It's, it's like an they're... artist support centre and they loan mm -hmm. stuff out. People come from America to go, I need a list Paul. And, you know, it's yeah. kind of what it is. So, and it's the most expensive one in there. Yeah, so... I don't want to get too much into uh, the deal that we eventually got for Pete on this guitar, but basically this is a this is a 2016, so it would have been hanging up in the showroom for three or four years. Yeah, three years probably. You look here, and it's another 58. 
although it feels like a slimmer neck version to my 58. Yeah, that was the first thing that grabbed me. It was, yeah. It's much more like a 59 yeah. in the neck shape. Uh, but it's a Tom Murphy aged one. So for those of you who don't know who Tom Murphy is, he's the guy that, that does um, all the Gibson relicking for yeah. uh, all the artists. He's the most expensive guy you can go to if you yeah. want to do the aging. He, he specs these guitars, so he has a, like a Tom Murphy spec for his Les Paul, but he doesn't actually build them. They're built in the custom shop. Yeah. But they're built to, a, to his sort of spec and his neck carve and everything. Yeah. He then does the relicking. Where's he the... lacquers it as well. So right. he'll, he'll, he'll lacquer, he'll spray the lacquer over. Um, uh, who was, oh, that was Zach from Mythos. Yeah. Because he, Zach knows uh, Tom, and he said he lacquers them. And the way he lacquers them is completely different from anyone else. Um, and on all of his guitars... This is the best bit, yeah. You, you would look at this and think, oh, that's like I did on my gold top. I cracked a lac on it. Um, crack a lac. But actually, in, in the, this is all done by... With a razor. The razor. <laughs> so then it's all razored in. And then once that's done, they polish it back down. So it looks like it's cracked. Where's the, you know, um, yes. Matt Gronig on, on The Simpsons, or like, like Homer's ear is MG, isn't it? Well, yeah. There's a TM somewhere yeah. on every single relic that, that Tom does. We'll, get a, we'll have to get a uh, close up on this, but here is the little T. See that T? Yeah, and then yeah, there's yeah. an M there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's the M and there's the T. So he, he'll put TM on everything. And, you know, the way that he, he'll, he'll do the uh, headstock. Where, for instance, the corners here, when you look at yours, Mine are a bit but what, what happened early. back in the in the fifties, uh, in the late fifties, they would accidentally knock these in the factory because they weren't. In fact, this is a story. They weren't as careful as they are now. So a lot of the Gibsons came out with the rounded corners on it. So he's done that. Oh, they get knocked and they just quickly sandpaper. Over no, no, yeah, like... just go. Oh, nobody <laughs> saw that. That kind of thing, you know, uh, back in the day. So that's so that's done because that happened wow. from the factory. Um, and the neck is, so you see how it's all kind of white, lighter here. Yeah. So the way that it's been sprayed, it's just a thinner lacquer or, and it's well, all nitro, of course, pickups and. Anyway, look, so anyway. if you were to <laughs> go to your Gibson dealer, your local Gibson dealer, which of course, hopefully is Anderton's, but yeah. it might not be. Um, and you're, I want and a you're Murphy. looking at regular regular you know custom shop their custom shop display yeah you might see a 58 you probably will see a 58 or a 59 or, or yeah. this year is the 70th anniversary of the 1960 les paul so you might see some of those but you're going to pay anything from probably four and a half to six grand depending on how flashy the top is and which one yeah. that you go for so you know these are expensive guitars yeah not as expensive as that though can I just um, quickly add before we start talking about that? Can, do you remember the uh, the uh, when they did the collector's choice? Yes. And I played that uh, Scott Paducah thing. Yes. It was called, yeah. Which was I said. You remember I said to you if I had the money, and I think that was about nine grand. I said if yeah. I had the money to buy this guitar, I would buy it right now. I, I, I no questions asked. It's the best Les Paul I've ever played in my life. This is better than that one. Well, so and it's so it's well, it's better, but it's 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 so much the same yeah. to play. I mean, I I I think and correct, I, we've never actually sold a Tom Murphy through Anderson. So hey, maybe you could be the first to call me. Um, <laughs> I think if you want to go Tom Murphy, expect to part with three or four grand on top of what your normal yeah, is. So, so not much change from ten grand if you want to go all out. And then there's the. Because I've seen, yeah, it's a lot of money. I've seen and the... a massively long waiting list as well, by the way. Yeah, yeah. And but he started the Murphy Lab now, hasn't he? So if they're starting to do a little bit of like a custom shop thing, yeah, uh, in at Gibson, so where you can get more than an NOS kind of finishing. Yeah. But hey, yeah, it's a lot of money, man. But so, it's just it's I've, if I didn't, it's, I'll have that telecast the moment when I want I wanted to buy the guitar and it was sold. I was like. If you let that go, you're gonna bloody regret it. Yeah. You know what I mean? That kind of thing. That vibe. If if I if I well, you were kind feeling, of lucky because this has never gone on sale in Anderton's. No, it? no, this, this it's is never on, it's never been on sale. It's not a no, guitar so, for sale. No, so so there was. But anyway, look. But anything, so everything the, the, is for sale. The point of this video is, uh, is mine still better? <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> So is it, it though? Well, that's why I want to kind of play yeah. it because it's it's. So we'll have to do some swapsies. Okay. Seas. So we do a quick first. First off, yeah. First off, this is much lighter. It's not super duper light, but it's compared to it as Paul. Yes, it's 
Now, I, you see, I, yeah. I remember when, when that came in yeah. and all the choices oh. of guitars had been weighed and I was, I was, you know, I had this like Mick Taylor thing in my head going, oh, the light guitars are always better, da 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 da, da. Yeah. So I was thinking, oh, okay, well, I'll, I'll definitely gravitate towards the ones that are sort of sub eight pounds. Yeah. Um, and then I, and that I just didn't correlate the weight to whether I liked it or not. No. So in the end, the one that I liked the best was, um, it was less than nine pounds, so it's not a heavy Les Paul, but it was like one of the middle ones. Yeah, it's but was, a Les Paul like, has to be uh, at nine, But this eight, is nine. this is lighter, is it? They're yeah. not chambered, are they? So this is just no. obviously a very light mahogany. Yeah. I think he specs it all light, but the um, I had four or five fifty nines in here as well, because when I heard, heard the, you know, when he's like, oh, you can buy it, but it's going to be X amount of money. I'm like, oh my God, I'll, I might as well buy a... <laughs> anyway, they were all nice, but again, we had this we, weird... We did the, we did yeah, the blindfold. Pete, Pete was like, like come yes. in, come in. And there were maybe four or four different 59 Les Pauls on the floor. Because yeah. I had the 59 in my head and this going, one. oh, you, the 59 is the best one. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, but it's but not you, though. They, some of them look stunning. Oh, they? Some stunning. of them I think I actually thought looked nicer than this, but hey. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. You, you, you started playing and you're like, so can you hear the difference? And whilst I'm visually looking, I'm sort of really ebbing and flowing and going, I don't think I can hear any difference or maybe I can and maybe in my brain it's just because I can see it. So Pete was like, go and turn around. Like, turn around. Um, so I stood at the back of the room, literally with hands over my eyes while Pete just played loads of guitars. And over about five minutes, three or four minutes, whatever, I, I literally went from going, they all sound the same Pete, they all sound the same Pete, to going, hang on a second, there's one that's got something you know, it's like, keep going, keep going. And I, and I kept coming back to the one and I'm going, which, that one, which one's that one? And it was this one. It was that one. But it's like, <laughs> it was 1%. It's not, but yeah. And you are, and you're literally going, is that extra 1%? This is what sparked the whole debate, isn't it? Is that 1% worth paying double for? And then it be, kind of comes, you've literally got to go, can you afford it? And how bad is the itch? Yeah. Because it's like, it's not, it's rash. It's not rationally or logically worth it. Why would you pay double to get one percent? Yeah, no, 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 at all. But but it, if the itch is bad and you can afford it, you are and you don't buy it. That itch is forever going to be at the back of your head, going like well, ten years I, later. Why, yeah, did, why, why didn't, didn't you, I get why that? Why did you get that one? Yeah, and you're going to play so many other ones, and it's never going to be the same. But. I just, yeah, anyway, let, let's have a little... It's meant to be, everything happened for a reason. I do think that they were sneaky giving it, lending it to me. <laughs> I tell you what, just, can you just strum that acoustically? Mm-hmm. I thought this one sounded like, what's the word? Just like m more acoustically vibrant, but I can't tell now. A little bit. I think it's got a little bit more there's, acoustic. There's some more, yeah, there's a little bit more... Something to it, isn't Yeah, there? yeah, absolutely. You, I guess you guys probably can't hear that on Not really, but well, you can hear but, the lapel. I but. mean, the, the neck is... Interestingly, I've only really got Zach Broyles to go on this. Zach is the guy who owns Mythos. He used to work at Carter's Vintage Guitars. Yeah. He's played a lot, and he's friends with Tom Murphy. He's played a lot of old Les Pauls. And he was saying, if anything, he thinks that Gibson kind of over-egg the fatness of the 58 neck on the current sort of reissues almost yeah. not saying that they never made one this fat but it's almost like this idea that the 58 was quite a lot fatter from the 59 in his opinion is a bit of a myth i think what they, it's a mythos a mythos i think what they did was uh, as far as i could uh, read myself to and that they would everything was much more made by hand so it's much more you know, and as the corners and all that stuff so it was just they just went like that and then somebody went that feels right you know oh, they wasn't sure it was kind of it even was if much they had more... a template for it you still yeah, it's still every single yeah. one's going to be a millimeter different yeah yeah, yeah hmm let me have this one back again so it's much lighter it's a little it's a little slimmer it's you still know you've got a guitar neck in your hand yeah, right but i tell you what the the neck this the lacquer on this neck feels a bit sticky where that one doesn't yeah, that I feels think, a little bit more like a satin finish. I think there's, neither it's of these worn. guitars have what you'd class as like a rolled fingerboard like you'd get on a str an old Strat. No, but they, this one definitely feels like it's played in. a tiny bit more played in than that one. Yeah. Um, this feels like the thumb has been over it, you know, a lot, a lot of times. I just, I don't know, man. I mean... It, Go on, just play. 
I love this guitar, you know I do. Uh, It is. <laughs> it's, so, it's so dynamic. It's like you can pick hard, you can pick soft, and you, you feel like you've got so much to go. Come on, beauty. Just do it for me. It's so much clearer. It's and much it, clearer. It's open. On, on, that... on the, yeah, mm. it's almost like. <laughs> it's isn't weird. Isn't that weird? Because that the neck pick on this is just sensational. So chimey, isn't it? It's and so it, chimey. Yeah. Do, do it. Do it again. But do it, let's play a bit on the bridge pickup on your oh, first. Play a bit on the bridge. I mean, I've got I've got a, a clean amp with a a Greer light speed on just to give that kind of. Maybe I should just take it off. No. Yes. Okay, go on the back, go on the uh, bridge. Okay. I mean, this is the guitar that Robin Ford said the bridge, the neck pickup on that sounded better than on his Les Paul. So I wonder what he was going to say if he played that. It's a bridge. It's just much sort of, um, it's more chimey, isn't it? More it's open. More open, like, it, almost like less output. So it's a little bit yeah. less uh, pushing the amp and it allows the sound to bloom it's a bit almost more. Like this, it's almost like there's a cloth over it. Not, not, a, not as much as a bit, as a, but do you know what I mean? It's just a little bit sort of. <laughs> I mean, the look, man is. I'm not sad, sad. Yeah, I mean, one. I think when I bought these, these were un these were like three and a half grand. So it's like, it's like your guitar is like three times as much. And I still... Yes, but the fact... Does the anybody fact want to buy a 2014 58? No, I'm so, just... But the fact is that... It's just, it's not as bright, is it? That... Okay, let me. Um, you play and play and both. So I'm just just too depressed now. Okay, so let's. Uh... Oh no! So I'd like to say we we changed the, both of the sets of strings. Yeah. Strings on them, same strings. So. What uh, are we using? Ten to fifty-two. Ten to fifty-two. No, sorry, ten to forty-eight. Ten to forty-eight. Yeah, I think. Play this one, because it's so difficult. It might not. I got it. You know, I, yeah. Ah, oh, just. A, <sighs> it's definitely heavier. The neck is definitely thicker. Yeah, definitely, definitely thicker. See, and this seems the more output in it. I've always thought that the reason this sounds more open is because they are softer output pickups. Yeah. Um, and they're not. Hi, I mean they're quite low wind sort of PAF kind of vibe things, but this is just it just sounds a bit muffled. Does that make sense? It doesn't sound bad. It just sounds a bit more muffled. It's so weird now you say it. That lack of real clarity at the top end is quite obvious, isn't it? It's very obvious. So now put a, the million on. Yeah. 
A bit more quacky again. No, we've had quackiness, but your the, your back pickup is more quacky. So here's this with the Mjolnir. Maybe not. I don't maybe don't I don't think it's that much louder that one actually. It's the perception of volume once you've got a gain pedal on screen. It's it's going to be how much it's driving the pedal. I think that sounds like more of a scooped mid-range, more of a like it's just pleasant to your ears. There's more top and yeah. uh, bottom end. Isn't yeah. it? Come on, oh, I'll just play that man. A G. Let me just play the same. On the back pickup. I actually like the... Of course you do, it's your guitar. No, but with the game, <laughs> when you listen to players like Slash, yeah. and there is, there is, you can almost tell it's like the mid-range has been dialed in there to give it that slightly more gnarly tone. Yeah. That sounds more like that to me. Somebody scratched this. <sighs> there you, did, you did the stank face. <laughs> there's there's more of everything in them, but it's not as loud, but it's just more of even the mid-range is in there. Almost like it's almost single coil. I hate saying it, but yeah, you know, in a, I agree. A really fat single coil. P90 style, maybe. A little bit get, uh, the Dane into the Mjolnir. <laughs> I mean, there's something special there, isn't there? I can even feel it when I when I play it. So. Mine's even got wrong notes on it. Yeah, I'm taking still, it back. Still sounds Can great, we just though. do a sustain? Like get. Okay. Get, oh, you yeah, know when you do the, the bend on the like the fifteenth fret, whatever, and you've got all the, you get the, you get, you might need to turn the gain up a little bit or the volume up. Let's just see whose guitar sings. Okay, look, we didn't touch anything. I don't think we're that loud or with that much gain in here. So to no. get that sustain, that was impressive. It was see very much impressive. Come on, then. See if I can do the same thing on this. I mean, that's feedback now, isn't it? That'll go on forever. There was, feed, was feedback on that one as well. No, I know. I think your, I thought your natural string note died faster on that one than that one. Not only by like a second. Yeah, maybe. But it goes into feedback so fast, doesn't it? So this is all getting a bit Nigel Tufnell, this, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. No, don't, 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 don't touch point. it. Don't, don't point don't it. Point. Yeah, I mean, there's. But your stuff, your your stuff, that your stuff, that. Does any guitar other than a Les Paul do that? Just, I don't know. I don't think it does. But I'm just if you, saying. If there is, just put it in the comments. I don't think it does. Here's an E chord on this one. Ooh. 
It's not yeah. the same, is it? Not that the same. E chord. Not the same. That E chord there. Is that E chord worth double the money though? <laughs> oh, I'm depressed now. Because I play, so when we did it, if you saw, we were playing down in the basement there, and I plugged it into the Marshall. I'm like, what? The? That was just like amazing moment. So you, there you go. It is better than yours. I'm sorry to say, but it should be because it's much more money and it's 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 done by someone yeah. who's who's who gets the body in and he will do all the lacquer and all the check in and the necks and I get it pickups I, I don't know what pickups are in here because I I don't just don't know I get it and to, I as I said a as sort of anything. as disheartening it is to play any guitar that ends up being better than one that you really really love it doesn't make me love this any less maybe a tiny bit less um <laughs> But I it, can see you going to the shop now and get sick. No, no, no. But what it does out. do, in a way, is it is you know, you know the the guitar shop owner of me just goes, well, that's how it should be. You it should, know, it should it, be. It's like there shouldn't really be a situation where you're selling a guitar for one price that's better than a guitar that's a lot more expensive. You know, really, the, it doesn't matter if it's like a teeny weeny bit better because that's I mean that's everything, isn't it? I'm you know I've seen. We talk about this a lot, don't we? You know, once you get past all the kind of hi-fi that you can buy in the in the mass yeah. market stores, you go to hi-fi specialists. You can get like, you know, two things amps that. that are fifty thousand pounds versus twenty thousand pounds, yep. and you sit there sort of going, oh, I don't, "Can I even hear the yeah. difference?" Well, that's yeah, like cars, isn't it? It gets you from yeah. A to B, whether it's eight hundred quid or eighty grand. You yeah. know, you, it still gets yeah. you where you need to go. And the same with guitars, you know, the Purple Squire for 140 quid is, or a Squire for that money. That's it still a... does something. There's something special about this guitar. Mm. It's just in such, the story. A sh such a shame it's got a ding on it here. Yeah, it's scratched up, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, it's just scratched up. More, uh, more debate about relics in the comment section. Yeah. Say what you like, just I, be nice, please. Yeah, I love it. I love um, it because it feels like it's been played. And that's the whole thing yeah. where I said, this feels like satin. It well, feels like a satin You know what? Finish. There is another way of going. If you just went, I want a guitar that was built in 58 or 59 and I want it that kind of color and that kind of condition uh, plays like that. You know, what are you in for? A quarter of a million quid? At least, I mean, I, I know it's a totally different thing. It's an investment. Oh, an original one? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh yeah, there was one that was 150,000 pounds on yeah. reverb. So, I mean, I know it's, you know, we're not trying to say it's a, that's an investment and 100%, you buy that guitar now, it should just continue to accrue in yeah. value. Hard to know on these things whether they'll, they probably will accrue in value over time, but not, not in the same way that that uh, and no, 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 one no, not at all. But man, it God is damn it! <laughs> I'm sort I'm, of half pleased, half disappointed. <laughs> I need, I need to reconnect with this and just go. I, st I still love you, baby. I still love you. I do, which I do. And I'll I mean, tell you, what, I've been playing this a lot recently. I've got a lot of great guitars, and I think all the guitars that I, ha I have are all amazing guitars. But you find something when you don't expect it to happen. Mm. You know, then it's like this guitar. It's like wow. Do you know that, that feeling that I had exactly the same thing at the, as with the Telecaster? When I played, yeah. I was like, there's just something about this that is, spe yeah. this, I need this. The only difference with the Telecaster was that the Telecaster you could basically afford to, you know, by just like making a couple of sets. This, yeah, this. Um, I mean, I don't know what's happened to them, but did you did you get asking price for your three children on eBay? Yeah. You did? Okay. <laughs> I've sold one already. <laughs> she doesn't know yet. She doesn't know. <laughs> doesn't know yet. You get like, a package of the, the car. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, right. Come on then. Let's so, jam so out. So there we are, Lee. Let's jam um, out. Um, well, maybe we should. Was any is, if, is anyone interested in in the Tom Murphy stuff? Well, um, Wildwood does loads of them. I mean, there's a part of me that just goes. At some point over the next six months, I'll probably talk to Gibson and go. Can we somehow either go back and look at the spec of those pickups or? take those out and give them to Monty so that he can measure them. And, and somehow we ought to try and do something with Gibson that is a, like we've done with your Purple Telecaster, yeah, that, where yeah. it's like, you know, you can kind of have repros of that. Because that not. is a special guitar. It's but, you know, cool and it, but maybe, I mean, obviously we could 
do a, an exact repro with Tom, but you know, those are going to be big money. I was thinking we do something, I don't know, maybe we look at just doing a regular Les Paul standard, but with those pickups in it or something. Who knows? What's this color again? Is it Sunrise Heritage, T-Burst? Heritage, Heritage Cherry, Cherry Sunburst, isn't it? I think they only did this in, there's a limited edition and only in two colors. So. Because in 1958 and 59, the burst only ever was in two colours. Yeah. And it's just all the variants nowadays nowadays are are essentially where Gibson have seen guitars that have faded in certain ways. So this, you know, you see this, which looks a bit like Bernie Marsden's The Beast. Yeah. 100% on day one would have looked like that this. or yeah. more like that. Yeah. And, and it again, fades if, off with the sun. If you want a proof of that, if you go and watch the very first video I did with Bernie, we take the... Um, that's right. Select a disc off of it, and it's absolutely it's that this color red underneath, color underneath. Yeah. In fact, it's probably darker than that. It's it's absolutely the color it probably was on the day it was made. Yeah, and he's got loads of these little things in the Bernie as well, doesn't he? Claw marks. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah. from where he's used it to save himself from werewolves and polar bears. It's it's just an incredible guitar. But there it's we a go. great guitar. I'm but super jealous. <laughs> Every single guitar you own is just very slightly better than the one that I own. And you're a better guitar player. Well. It's just, I tell you, I play sometimes you, working I? here is just, I've got a better car. I will just, uh, I will just have to sort of satisfy myself. Absolutely. Much better car. <laughs> I mean, one wheel on your car and the rim is better than my car. So fair enough. I'd take that. <laughs> Come on. That's enough. Uh, and if you wonder why somewhere in the middle of this video, uh, it felt like we stopped and started again. That's because Noel Gallagher came to the store and I decided to go and say hello. And he was a really, really nice bloke. He's a cool dude. we talked guitars for about 10 minutes. And then I literally did this awful thing where I had to go, uh, anyway, um, I got I've to go, got to go, go video. I've got to go and do some videos. And it was just, he was like, oh, all right then. Burn. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> anyway. People never walk away from me. What a dude though. Must have spent half my life in the 90s listening to that band. Anyway, right, okay. Let's play. I win. See you later. <laughs> <laughs>